<laughs> Yo, what's up guys? Uh, I'm back. But uh, really trying to get as much footage as possible, much content for you. I got a whole bunch of stuff sitting on the editing table. This is the time of year that, as you know, if you follow me on my other social media platforms, I do a lot of birch bark quill work. And this is around the time of year that we need to harvest the, the summer bark. Now it's a little bit early, but I'm still gonna go try and I'm looking on some new areas because birch relatively grows around water. That's where I'm walking along the water areas and crossing different places to try and find where these trees are and they're really rare out here in Montana. There are some, I have found some, but you gotta hike quite a bit and you find one or two trees. It's, it's pretty tough. It's adventure time, I just got scared by a duck. There's a baby duck over there and we're gonna go look for some birds. Looked around different places, I followed the water from left to right and uh, didn't find a single birch. And sometimes you'll find one by itself, but they usually like clump together. So I'm gonna move to an area where I know there is some and I'm gonna like, stop there and then go look around. Go get out and uh, walk around, see if I can find some little hidden off the road. So uh, let's go. It's zoom on me, come on boy. We're uh, gonna go follow this, this one section down to the end over there and um, see, they kind of like the water drops down when it comes off the mountains. So it kind of, you know, there's like little lake areas. I'm gonna go look around the edge over there and see if I can um, come across them. I mean, I was trying to look in new areas because they grow sporadically in different lower sandy watery spots. And the way to know is to uh, just get out there and get your boots wet and uh, make it count. This is a new spot for me. There's kind of this like trail here and I'm gonna take it up to where I know the water is going along on this side up here. I'm gonna hike in here as best I can and uh, see if I can find the first set of birch bark. So what the hell? What the hell? What, the hell you you, what are you doing out here? Just sitting there. Sitting on an <laughs> ant <laughs> an anthill? The guy was sitting on an anthill. Look at all those damn ants. What are you doing sitting on an anthill? You got any ants on you? You do. <laughs> I didn't even know. He's out here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> sitting on an anthill. I don't even want to know why you're out here. But dude, man, you're like really far away from home. <laughs> Anyways, I'm looking for birch. You can help me find some birch. I'll teach you. I'll teach you the ways of the birch tree. You know, you could eat this. It's, you can eat that? Horse mint. Horse it, mint. It, it kind of brings. He said, it is mint. It tastes like a horse. Horse mint. <laughs> oh, it does burn. Yeah. So if you don't remember Watson from previous episodes, he uh, is the one that picked sage only just before a storm, was it? Yeah. Just before a storm, so that's him. Found him in the bush again. Boom! Found some. But uh, <laughs> it's stuff I already found. Look, I've already harvested this tree. So I took a piece out of this tree already. And you can tell that the bark does come back. It grows back. So I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, get another sheet or two out of here. What I'm looking for is spots that have minimal amount of blemishes. So blemishes would be like these little knots, like right here. Tree branches or like, uh, you know, like the little pieces here. The minimal amount because these are really hard to, uh, you can't quill through that. So you wanna get these really soft areas here and you can just peel it. Save all that for fire starters. So now with the weirdness of finding Watson in the most random place in the mountains from, I don't even know. I don't even wanna know. I'm not even gonna ask him the full details, but at least he's safe with me now. But I'm gonna show you guys how I am going to harvest this tree here. I'll show you what we're doing. I'm gonna take, so what I'm trying to do is stay away from these branches and I'm gonna look for these blemishes here. So I don't want this and I don't really want this. So I'm gonna get from here to here. I'm gonna take this stuff off so I can see. And then what I'm gonna do is I take my knife, do my initial cut, pushing in pretty decent, but not too much to, you know, really go into it, just to get through the layers of bark. Go through again one more time. Okay, and then I'm gonna make one little slit on the bottom, like that. And one little sit on the top, like that. Okay, and then I just slide my knife in here like this and just peel it up a bit. 
I'm gonna try and make it as equal as possible. Now this is a little bit of a younger tree, so it's gonna be a little bit of a thinner bark. Then from here you just... And there you have it. Secrets revealed. That's what I'm looking for. So when you guys are asking about materials, I'm hiking out here in the middle of nowhere. I'm driving about 20 miles from home and I'm hiking through to find the trees where I can get these certain pieces. Then from here, I'm just gonna take this excess out. I'll keep all this for fire starter later. So I'm gonna see if I can get a piece or two from it. Now, you guys, uh, people are gonna be like, oh my God, you're damaging the tree, yes. I am damaging the tree, but you know what? I'm taking a small amount from different trees and the bark will actually get tough and grow back for the winter and it will not kill the tree. A lot of times people, they will cut an entire tree and use the whole tree. Now, this is, this is our, our traditional ways. This is, our, this is how we make our canoes. This is how we make our shelters. And we're honoring this tree by using it, by keeping these, this kind of art produced. So um, I'm keeping it as respectful as possible. And, and, and you know, I respect that. So I take certain pieces of the tree and then I'll move on to another tree. Mm -hmm. If I can get a whole tree that was really nice, cool. But in Montana, it's hard to find this stuff. So I'm trying to find a place that have least amount of blemishes. There's a spot up there, look right there. See that spot there? I want that spot. I'm gonna try and climb the tree without dying. If I still have my clee, clee, my clee triming, my clee triming abilities. So when some of y'all ask me, or they wonder why my quill work is so expensive, this is what I go for just for you guys. So if I die, at least it's on film. You'll have to you'll have to edit this for me once. <laughs> Just for this, I'm upping my prices. Do it for the vlog. This is how you find the good unblemished stuff. You gotta climb for it. Look at that, look how high that was, look. 10 feet off the ground, maybe 11. All right, let's go find some more trees. Trees. Looks like yellow birch in here, but we're gonna go take a look. What is that? There's a red thing in there. I don't know what it is. Watson, go look. <laughs> go. Oh. Go tell me if it's safe to go in there. <laughs> Some weird stuff you find in the bush, man. I was expecting more hunting birch. And it's starting to rain, which is fine because it's actually uh, kind of warm. It's like what 75? Yep. 75 80 degrees. Yo, check this stuff out Anybody ever seen this? It looks like barnacles, but look stuff comes out tree barnacles And now we just gotta like uh, put it away. Go get some more. So 
sometimes you have to like cruise around and look and see if you find birch. Now there's two different species of birch out here in the Bear Paw Mountains. And there's one that just, just doesn't work for what I had to try and We found another spot where I have harvested and I'll show you the spot here. And you guys get to see a tree that I have some bark off like two years ago. And it's still thriving, it's still green, it's still luscious and it's still, still surviving. So here's that tree right there. So that's two years ago. And it ends up making itself a new type of bark and then it heals itself. It takes a long time. But it's not killing a tree, it's still green. See, still green. Hey guys, it's Watson here. Also known as um, Walks on Grass. And um, I'm out here with Devin, trying to find some birch bark to make I'm gonna stuff. Teach him. Yeah, I'm gonna teach him how to do some crow work. So he's gotta get his own bark. And I have a frozen porcupine in the freezer, so you get to pluck that one. Oh, isn't it gonna be harder? It will thaw it, it will <laughs> definitely thaw it out. <laughs> but there's a stream on this side and a little bit on this side and it's a lower elevation in between the two mountains. If any of my powwow friends, my bingo friends are out there. <laughs> my powwow bingo friends from SHJ Bingo. It's a little toboggan here, or a little potato, or I have a different name. I go by different names. See you guys later. elk that was a big freaking bull he was right there 30 <laughs> yards standing on the road let's see if we can get close to him Shh. that was cool that was a big bull all nice velvet and we're here to drop wadi wat off did you survive yeah was it hard yeah well yeah it was kind of we we tracked a bit it was all right. It's crazy that I don't know how I found you in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you're safe and brought you home. Yeah. Well, yeah. I live out there sometimes. He lives. He lives in the bush. <laughs> just goes out there with jeans and a t-shirt. All right. So he's going to collect his, get his, uh, what's on the, which one is it? Smaller piece here. And a couple rolls. Not bad. Yep. Be good. Make good choices. Yep. Tell everyone, make good choices. Make good choices. What's up? <laughs> so, uh, I'm throwing this clip in here because I came back a week later after Watson and I, even though you can see that we are, me and Watson and my son wasn't there. I came out, I chopped these two trees. I needed these, I wanted to get the whole tree because I want to use it for firewood and it was good bark all the way up. So I took the whole trees, I chopped them with an old school ax that I have and that's just kind of how hardcore I am. I don't have a chainsaw. I definitely love the exercise. I want to show you guys that um, being with your kids and showing this, them this kind of stuff is, is something that's really important and it's important to me and that's what I want to use this platform for is to encourage people to, to share what they have. Um, there's been too many people I know that, that just hoard their information they, and it just doesn't seem right to me. So I'm going to show you guys, uh, I'm going to show him how to harvest this tree. I have one little cut in there already. Okay, along. Okay, there's one. Okay, so put your finger in here like this and slide your fingers down. Yeah, peeling it all the way down. wet. And then slide your hand. It's a little wet. It's just it's sap water. Put your hand inside like this. And then slide it up like this. Two hands inside. Put Turn it around. Yeah. And slide your hand up. Yeah. And then just keep doing that. And then just peel it a little bit. You can use two hands. It's a good sound. You can go the other way too if you want. Here, look. Oh. While you with the camera, go ahead. And go back up. Peel it, take it out. There you go. Here it is, buddy. Show everybody. Aww. 
Mm -hmm. right. This is what I mean. Showing your kids to do this stuff and, and just getting out in the bush. We're like, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 miles outside from the house in the mountains. Just looking for birch, cutting trees, getting some firewood and uh, making my art for you guys. I'm ready to back to dad. Ready? Yep. You got it? Yep. Okay, pull. Ha <laughs> <laughs> This is my shield, Dad. Alright, protective shield? Yep. This is the best. This stuff I really enjoy. I mean, yes, I like to uh, travel and see stuff and I buy things but I think this is what really keeps me rooted is uh, to be out here in the trees with the thorns and the bugs and the snakes and the elk and the deer and my kids and the birch bark and the ball. Oh, that's fun so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys when I get home, this one has a lot of spiders on it. Let's leave the spiders here. But um, I'm gonna show you a new way that I I uh, keep this and like, I'll show you when we get home. So let's go to B-roll footage of uh, going home, all right? My harvest of this smaller tree. Now I want to use some of it for firewood and I also noticed that there were some pretty good pieces that uh, I want to just take it all and use these pieces because you can make quite a few earrings with one piece. And then I'm gonna wrap it up and show you how I store them. Now this is a new technique for me because uh, I noticed last year I've had uh, quite a few problems with uh, my birch bark and how it curls and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm gonna get these little munchkins to help me out. Okay, you gotta take the little pieces off of here. So let's yeah. take all this stuff off because we're gonna use this for a uh, fire starter. Everybody hello! <sighs> like from, from crew, that little tiny um, like sloth is named Belt. Um, um, he does this. Da, da, da. <laughs> That's my son. Just like me. Piece off here, like this. Split. Last year, I harvested this piece, and you'll notice that as soon as you peel it off the tree, it curls the opposite way. So this here is the outside of the bark. So once you peel it, it curls the opposite way, which is kind of crazy, but that's just what it does as it dries. So you can quill on either side, depending on what it looks like. I like to quill on this side because it's a little cleaner. What I'm gonna do is see all the grain is going this way. So I'm gonna curl it like this. And I'm gonna go over like that. Okay, the bark on the outside. Now this will prevent it from getting super curled up like this because it naturally wants to curl this way. So if I dry it the opposite way and I open it, it'll stay more flat rather than curling up. Then I'm just gonna take a piece of sinew, like this, and we're gonna tie it up. The knot, that way it just holds. There it is. I'm gonna try this out this year and see how it goes. And I'll go get my little basket and show you my whole inventory. So just stay right there. This is my my little harvest. Now it's not much. Hold it up. So see, you can tell it naturally wants to curl the other way, see? So this is already a week old, see? Hopefully, this makes me a couple more pieces that I can sell that help provide for the family help provide for me, my wife, my kids, my cat, my dog, 
and uh, our travels and this YouTube channel. So if you guys like the stuff that you see on the channel, um, subscribe, hit like, you know, that really does help. And what, what, does it make good choices? Uh, I was going to say something. Okay, he's got to say something. It's his collection. Uh, I want the stars and some unicorns. So that's what she likes. This is, uh, this is my life. This is the stuff that I do. You guys are coming along with me and um, I'm going to try and not hold back any information that I know. Because like I mentioned earlier, there's too many people holding on to things and knowledge that they should be passing on to other people and stop getting in that mindset of it's mine and they're going to take it from me and stuff. So if you guys want to go out and get your own birch bark, by all means, go for it. If you guys want to learn how to do quill work, by all means, do it up. Anyways, make good choices, subscribe, like, and... Ah! <sighs>